Howdy. So I want to talk to you today about regression, um, a little bit more about regression, and then we'll talk about the meaning of R squared in regression. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves what we're doing with regression. So we have some x and y variable, and we're trying to estimate the parametric relationship that underlies um, this sample that we've gotten. And so, remember what this is, this is our error, and this is our slope, and this is our intercept. And the parameter of particular interest usually is the slope, with our null hypothesis being that the slope is zero, and we want to see if we can um, find evidence that the slope is not zero, and then is it positive or is it negative. So we're estimating from the sample um, estimates of alpha and beta which are A and B. Okay, so that's our purpose of regression, linear regression in this case. There are many other forms of regression which we'll get to. I want to talk about the assumptions of regression for a moment. Um, you know, we talked about assumptions of ANOVA, so we'll talk about assumptions of regression. The first one is that uh, X is measured without error. Y is measured with error, but perhaps, but x is measured without error. And uh, you know, if you think about this in the real world, when we're measuring biological parameters, any continuous variable is going to be measured with some error. And so that's probably not very realistic. Um, however, this is only a problem when the error is large. So people have investigated this, and um, it only causes a problem with fitting a line to the data if the error is large. So something to think about when you're doing regression is that your x variable, you want to measure it as carefully as you possibly can to reduce the error in that measurement. <clears throat> okay, um, so far we've been talking about why it, it is being a linear function of x. And statistics programs will fit a linear function to very nonlinear data. So you want to kind of look at your residuals and see if there's a pattern in them. For example, as you go from left to right, from low values of x to high values of x, are you getting skewed patterns of the residuals so that they're all above in the middle but below in the tails or vice versa? Um, that would indicate perhaps you have a parabolic shape somehow to your distribution. In. But any statistics program can fit a line, but underlying that fit is the assumption that the parametric relationship is linear, and it may not be. So it's just something to realize that you're doing when you do linear regression is you're assuming that there is a linear parametric relationship. And paralleling again ANOVA assumptions, resi residuals are assumed to be normal. And that's, of course, something we can test in the same way we've tested it with our shapiro wilk w test, for example, in SAS jump. Um, it also is assumed that residuals are homoscedastic. Okay. And I mentioned that you know jump and other statistics programs um, generally uh, treat regression using a general linear model in much the same way as they, te they treat ANOVA. So it really is just fine um, to, to think about these residuals in the same way that we've thought about with ANOVA and they, the same assumptions are inherent in that. Okay, so we are, we've talked about estimating the slope. I've had you manually estimate the slope. What about this R square? And actually, if you remember, if when you've been doing ANOVAs, um, you'll actually see that SAS jump, for example, gives the output uh, of an R square when you do an ANOVA. So we haven't talked about it to this point because R squares typically aren't reported in ANOVAs, although they can be. And um, it, with regression, though, we do report R squares quite often to tell about how well our line fits the data, how well 
variation in x explains y. And so I think you probably somewhere before this time gotten exposed to r square. But let's talk about the calculation of r square. And so I want to kind of illustrate by drawing uh, a fitted line. So we fitted a line to our data. And uh, I want to talk about a single point for the time being. Okay, so here's our observation. Okay, so here's our x, here's our y. That observation is our y sub i, okay? And what our regression line is predicting is that for the x sub i corresponding to that y sub i, um, we notice that that observation is above the regression line, right? And so the predicted y, the actual y that our regression line is telling us should be corresponding with that x. I'm going to put a little hat on it to indicate so y hat is predicted y, predicted by our regression equation, uh, regression equation, okay? So we have a predicted y by the regression equation, and then we also have a mean y. So somewhere in the middle here is y bar, the mean. And you can see all of those are different, right? So uh, if we think about our total sums of squares in this case, um, that's going to be equal to the y sub i minus y bar quantity squared, right? And of course, we would sum over all points, so all observations, however many we have. And I'm just showing one here to keep it really, really simple. Um, so this would be our total sums of squares. And um, if we think about it, though, we also have um, ex uh, an unexplained sums of squares, right? The unexplained sums of squares is the error. So this is our error or unexplained <clears throat> sums of squares. So that's y sub i minus y predicted. Now you notice that that's going to be a smaller value, right, than the deviation from the mean. So that means there's another component, the explained sum of squares, which is going to be the difference between those two, the total sums of squares minus the unexplained sums of squares. It's going to be the explained sums of squares. Okay? So, what am I all leading up to? So we want R squared to encapsulate what proportion of the variation in Y is explained by S. So R squared is going to be explained sums of squares divided by total sums of squares. And in fact, if you look at SAS jump output, it's going to be the model sums of squares divided by the total sums of squares. And you can look at that so that the jump gives you a model sums of squares, which is the sum of all our x factors, s sums of squares, right? <clears throat> and that's the explained part. And then dividing by that plus the error, which is the residual sums of squares. So essentially, it's giving you that fraction. And so you can think of R squared as being the proportion of the variation in Y explained by variation in X. It's very nice. It's kind of a measure of how good our model is. And you have to be very careful about that. As I pointed out last time, we have, might have a model. Um, we might have two points, for example. And trivially, 
we would get an r square of 1 because a line fits those two points perfectly. They're, the residual, the error variance is 0, right? If you sort of think about our model here, there's no deviation of the observation from the predicted, and therefore the error variation is 0. So 100% of the variation is explained. But that's trivial because um, we can only have one output. We have no replicates, essentially, of possible slopes. Um, so an R square of one is meaningless when we have no replication. And in fact, the more replication we have, the more meaningful R, B, R square becomes. It really isn't very meaningful with small data sets. Uh, and in fact, we don't know that we've explained any variation in y as a function of x when we have a small sample size. And by chance, for example, you know, if we had three points and that looked like this, <laughs> we would have an r-square close to one, and it wouldn't mean much either, because our next point we might get in our sample might be over here, or over here, over here, right? And we know that if we were to get a shotgun smattering of points so that x doesn't explain anything about y. Slope is zero. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> then we have r squared equals zero. There's no explanatory power uh, for our line. And our model um, is indicating that you know we knowledge of x explains nothing about variation in y. Then um, then we have R square of zero, and, and so anyway, that it sort of gives you an intuitive understanding that you have to put R square in context. R square um, is something that, it, in general, it does mean the proportion of the variation in Y explained by variation in X. We should not take that too literally. It really depends on our sample size how much we can believe that number, and actually. If our slope is not significantly different from zero, it really means that our square, whatever our square value we get, is not explaining anything, right? Because a slope of zero would mean we haven't explained any of the variation. So you have to put the R square in context of um, the sample size you have, the, the slope estimate you have, and so forth. So I, in regression, I pay more attention to the slope estimate and the significance of that and the sign of that, and secondarily, pay attention to the R squared. But for example, if I'm comparing two models, and I want to know if one explains more variation than the other, I, have, I can look at R squared as a starting point for that. We're going to see later on when we cover something called Akeki's information criterion that we need a more sophisticated way of comparing models other than just looking at R squared, but it's a starting point. And, um, and so we'll talk about that more later on as we're talking about uh, how to choose between alternative um, regression models. Okey doke. Sorry about the sneeze.